Hello everyone and welcome to ZP Productions and today I'll be talking a little bit on the 1.8 Nikon lens and that's because they represent, if you ask me, one of the best value you can get in the entire market in terms of a almost perfect middle ground where it comes to cost, performance and you know optical quality. The Nikon 1.8 in the Z mount is really a very very good range and if you ask me I'm actually quite surprised that Canon did not uh, do something similar I mean Canon traditionally don't really launch very good 1.8 lenses uh, but you know the Canon 35 and 85 1.8 leaves if you ask me things to be desired especially even their 50 1.8 but Nikon took a totally different route and today I'll be talking about them now, to me, the 1.8 series is quite the perfect middle ground, but this is not like the first time Nikon is doing it. Traditionally, even you know before the mirrorless world, Nikon do have an extensive line of 1.8. And even before I owned the Z series, I was using the F mount, and I had the 28, 35, uh, and I believe also the 85 1.8s from, I believe, the G series then. Not too sure on the alphabet, <laughs> you know, it's been some time. But uh, I've been using the 1.8 in Nikon series for a long time then. Uh, the reason is very simple. They do have, um, of course, one less stop or two-third less stop compared to their 1.4, 1.2 series. But, uh, oh, by the way, there's no 1.2, so it's only 1.4 in the past. And uh, optically, they aren't any much worse than their uh, bigger brothers normally. But in the Z series, the 1.8s are, if you ask me, as good as the 1.2s and 1.4s when it comes to optics especially. In fact, every one of these Z lens here are better than their predecessors, 1.4s and 1.8s and even you know, the 50mm 1.8 here. It's uh, when you stop down the 50, 1.2 Nikon to 1.8, it's in fact about the same. So it is a phenomenal series, uh, if you ask me. Now, there is uh, five lenses in their 1.8 series. I only have four here. There's 24, 35, 50, 85. And there should be another 20 millimeters. You can sh I can show you this screenshot from their website here. So there is a total of five 1.8 lens. And <laughs> really, this whole series of 1.8 lens are one of the reasons why I decided to buy the Z9 and some of the Z lenses to really try it out. Because I think they are truly very very good value now let's put into perspective about value first now their lenses here are not cheap in any way i wouldn't say them cheap because at 1.8 they are probably the most costly 1.8 lenses you can get in the market here i will talk in sing dollars because uh, it's hard for me to talk in other currencies because i just can't remember very well now like for example this 24 1.8 here costs I believe more than a thousand sing dollars while the 50 1.8 here costs I believe 900 or 800 plus sing dollars to put in the perspective there is about 600 USD by the way Singapore to US conversion is about 1.35 if I'm not wrong about there so this is actually really expensive compared to the Canon's version which is like $200 plus, $200 plus Sing dollars or $300. And uh, if you compare to even Sony, this is more expensive than the Sony by about $200, $300. But optically, this 50 1.8 is as good as almost any high-end 50 1.4, 1.2 lens I have ever tried. The only downside it is 1.8. And really, do you even call that a downside? It depends on do you need the 1.4, 1.2. And if you don't, this 1.8 here is pretty much optically as good as it gets. Now, normally I pick up the 1.4 and 1.2 lens because they are optically superior. And that's because they cost a lot more money and makers tend to give them better chromatic aberration controls, better sharpness across the frame. And overall, if you stop down to F2, extremely tech sharp. And I can tell you that all the 1.8 here are really designed like flagship lenses. All of them are optically really good. Chromatic aberration, relatively controlled. Uh, if you ask me so far, the 50 and 85 are very good. The 24 is okay. And the 35 just don't feel as uh, optically good as the rest. Uh, but that's my initial impression. I just bought this like three days ago. So I'm still testing it. I'll probably do a review. But you know, the 35 to me, looks like the lowest in terms of image quality so far uh, but you know i read a lot of reviews online and it doesn't seem to be that way so i should probably try a little bit more but that said every other 
1.8 here, the 24, 50, 85, is very satisfying to use. It gives me no craving for the 1.2, 1.4, unless I really need the aperture, especially in messy backgrounds where I want to just blow it out and bouquet them. And then maybe, yes, I would have thought, hey, maybe if I have a 1.2, it would have been better. Now, you, some of you may ask me whether whether, can I have, whether could I have afforded the 1.2. Yes, I could have purchased them if I want to. But when I entered the Nikon system in the past, and even when I entered the Nikon system today, I always reach forward for the 1.8 lenses because I feel that they just provide me so much better value. Now, the 1.8s of today are even better than the 1.8s of yesteryears because uh, Nikon actually built them to professional standard as such. You know, you look at the boxes here, they are all part of the S series, the professional series, which means in terms of construction, they are built more like a professional lens, which uh, a lot tighter, a lot better, a lot more dampened, and a lot more, if you ask me, better, I guess. And they also come with weather sealing. So you go, if you go onto the website, they are all weather sealed lenses with proper gaskets. Now, in the past, the 1.8 lenses by Nikon have weather gaskets, but Nikon never said that they are, you know, weather sealed properly. But in the 1.8 versions on the Z mounts, Nikon did claim that they are professionally built and should be similar to all their weather sealed lenses. So I think this is, I guess, uh, as good as it gets for lenses. And uh, they are also still relatively small, even though they are built optically good, they have relatively complex optical you know, designs. They are built quite small still, definitely smaller than most of the 1.4 and 1.2s uh, that is available today. In fact, this 50 1.8 here, which have optical quality almost on par to almost any of the good 1.4 and 1.2s in the market, it's about 50% the size compared to almost anything else. Uh, yet it still retains extremely good optical quality. Now, that being said, if you compare to other 1.8s, all these lenses are actually quite big. So that's something to note. Now, uh, I also want to say that as part of being a professional lineup in the Z series, they also come with hoods. Now, the hoods are not what I ex not right. They are just like bayonet hoods and then they lock on through friction. Not the best type of hoods because I prefer those with buttons, but no complaints here because if you buy most other 1.8 lenses in the market, they don't come with hoods and sometimes they are not even designed with a hood. So you have to get some third party solution just to get a hood on or screw it on. Not very elegant if you ask me, but you know, Nikon do build this all into their lenses here. Now, the only thing about this 1.8 series of lenses that I felt that Nikon could have done a little bit better is to give them slightly better autofocus motors. All these motors here are very quiet, but they just don't feel very fast. Now, I'm not too sure whether is it because of Nikon's algorithm or Nikon's motor, because I just feel that they are, if you ask me, not as responsive as a higher-end Nikon Z lenses, you know, even though, as I said, they are quite premium compared to 1.8, they are still quite affordable compared to 1.4s, but when it comes to autofocus, it just feels like they're just fast enough to do their job and that's about it, you know, they're not like blazing. Unlike the optical quality, which is as good as the high ends, but when it comes to autofocus, I just feel that they're just good enough, you know, nothing special. But maybe that's all Nikon wants. Because this is truly, if you ask me, the almost perfect middle ground for working professionals to hobbies who want good lenses, good primes. Every one of these primes will beat the zoom counterpart easily when it comes to optical quality. And they are 1.8, they are very usable wide open, and it's a joy to use all of them here. Now, if you are in a Nikon system, I highly recommend you look into the 1.8 lenses because they are just really, really good primes. I think you will not be, you know, disappointed in them. Now, if you are not in the Nikon system, well, too bad for you guys. You have to live with either okay quality 1.8s or extremely expensive 1.4s and 1.2s. By the way, when it comes to cost, as I say again, not the cheapest here, but every one of them are still almost I guess, wanted the price of a 1.2 or 1.4 equivalent if you are comparing to modern mirrorless standards. Because mirrorless lens are really expensive. The Sony 50mm f1.2, I remember I bought it at 2.8k Sing dollars, 2,800 Sing dollars. The Canon version is like 3,000 Sing dollars. And the Nikon version, I believe, is about 2,700, 2,800 Sing dollars. Really expensive. Well, this 50 1.8 here, 
which have almost similar optical quality compared to them, just as only 1.8, costs about 800. So think about it, you know, the only thing you lose is one star of light, and of course the depth of field and the bokeh, but if you don't need them, I think the 1.8 setups will probably be one of the best gems within the Nikon Z system. And that's about it for today. I just want to make a very short video on the one point lenses because I'm impressed by them and pretty much this is the reason why I am in the Nikon system today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.